Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a while since I've done a Bitcoin giveaway. Just to thank everyone for you know the support um, of the channel and you know just kind of being there and building a community and everything. Um, so it's been great. Really appreciate it. Um, this is a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of my time. So I really appreciate you guys. Um, so, you know, staying engaged and um, kind of supporting the channel. Um, so I figured I'd do another Bitcoin giveaway, you know, being it's been a while, and then just to thank everyone. So to enter the giveaway, uh, subscribe to the channel, um, turn on notifications, like this video, and then just leave me a comment with your wallet address, your BTC wallet address. Um, and then in the next video, I'll a, do a, like a live draw and uh, pick the winner and then um, transfer over their 100 US dollars in Bitcoin um, to their wallet. So um, any questions on this, let me know. It's pretty straightforward. I've done one of these before. Um, so uh, you know, subscribe, turn on notifications, like this video, and leave a comment with your wallet address, uh, Bitcoin wallet address. So um, I wanted to get into the video, uh, but before I do that, I wanted to show you guys this huge news. So New, New York Stock Exchange owner, um, they are launching their own Bitcoin firm and futures contracts. So the platform, uh, you know, give the ability to buy, sell, store, and spend digital currency. So this is huge. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange um, obviously is, is massive and has a lot of uh, backing behind it. Um, so if they're willing to go out and, and you know, uh, draw up this, exchange um, that's that's huge news for crypto altogether so that'll bring in some regulations hopefully um, it may go and help the ability to buy products with Bitcoin um, and retail which would be awesome um, and just kind of builds the uh, adoption and the regulation more around crypto and Bitcoin which we need um, any of us crypto lovers we need something like this um, which so it's, it's pretty awesome so um, then in order to get actually into the video, I wanted to talk about um, uh, crypto regulations because they vary all over the world, you know, country to country, that sort of thing. And there's a lot of questions. Even folks here in the U.S. have questions, you know, what are the laws, that sort of thing. So I've been working on the past week or two on a building a collection of all these regulations. Um, and I wanted to share, obviously, with you guys. So, you know, some of the content came from various sources, you know, over the Internet. But then I did add in a lot of my own stuff, too, my own comments and kind of thoughts and insights onto a lot of this stuff. So this document will eventually be on the um, Life Zoltar website. Um, I'll put a link down in the video description. I think it'll be like a blog post or something, just so you guys can reference it or print it out or something. Um, download, print, that sort of thing. Um, then hopefully, you know, it'll answer, uh, you know, questions for those that are unsure of crypto regulations in their country, um, that sort of thing. So let me get into it. All right. So here's the document. Um, a lot of it is consolidated notes that I found, some some of my own insight, that sort of thing. But hopefully after this, it should really answer a lot of questions on regulations across the world and maybe even your home country. So. Um, I'll start. So Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are in a essence borderless, right? Governments around the world are having varied reactions to Bitcoin and other crypto. On one hand, international business hubs like Switzerland and Singapore have opened their arms to crypto, but other countries, you know, not so much like China. Um, some countries like China initially embraced cryptocurrency only to shut the exchanges down later on. So Gulf countries like United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia have been hesitant about adopting crypto and are noticeably absent from this list. So they're really kind of shutting it down, at least for now. Um, being Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies lack backing by central authority, which is a good thing, um, I guess, for now. Um, various countries have different regulatory standards. Um, these individual standards also present the opportunity to drive crypto prices for better or for worse. So the below is a summary of various regulations around the world. So I'm going to go country by country, explain their laws, regulations, that sort of thing around crypto. Hopefully, you know, answers questions. Um, and then also, if anyone else has questions too, leave them down in the comments. Um, if I don't know the answer, I'll find out the answer for you. And then obviously, you know, to enter in the Bitcoin giveaway, um, subscribe to the channel and do all that stuff I mentioned before. So U.S., the United States. So regula regulators um, in the U.S. are currently struggling with how to classify Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Currently, Bitcoin is not necessarily considered legal tender in America like the U.S. dollar is. The U.S. Treasury Secretary has, has expressed concerns about crypto ability to assist criminals, uh, but his concerns have done you know, little to dampen the enthusiasm uh, among investors. 
you know, who trade on exchanges that are legal depending on the state um, that and handle the you know, second largest volume of Bitcoin worldwide at 26 percent. So the SEC, which is Securities Exchange Commission, believes crypto to be securities that should be regulated as such. And they have been cracking down particularly hard on the ICOs, initial coin offerings. The U.S. Commodity and Futures Trading Commission, which is F the CFTC, classifies crypto as a commodity while the IRS says it is not actually a currency. So to summarize, the U.S. is still trying to figure out what class crypto falls under and how it should be regulated. So there, there's a lot of questions that still remain in the U.S. Outside of investing in ICOs, which is um, illegal, I, I think, except for the, uh, uh, the, the big guys like the um, accredited investors. So for those making over $200,000 a year regularly and, or have at least a million dollars net worth. Um, that's a definition of an accredited investor. So without being one of those folks, you can't necessarily do ICOs um, at all anymore. And then they're still just trying to figure out, you know, wh what is crypto and how it should be classified. So stay tuned for the news. I'll make another video maybe in the next uh, couple months if things change on this. So the EU, the European Union. So while no member... A uh, state can in introduce its own cryptocurrencies. Exchanges are legal by country. So, uh, money laundering and other criminal activities remain a concern among government officials, and regulations differ nation to nation. So, uh, regulators have been cracking down with French regulators banning 15 exchanges in March. So, French officials have revealed a joint plan with Germany to regulate cryptocurrency markets. Now, while the EU currently consists of 28 countries, France seems to be the most heavily involved with regulating and or cracking down on crypto. So France is by far the most strict with these regulations. Also in April of this year, the uh, European uh, Parliament has backed the move to bring closer regulations to cryptocurrencies. So while this may sound like a good thing, it's more focused around preventing the use of cryptocurrencies and money laundering and terrorism financing. So the EU is maybe a little bit more ahead uh, with regulations and whatnot compared to the U.S. France is very, very strict on it, um, and they're really going after this whole uh, money laundering, terrorism uh, thing, that sort of thing. So, moving on to the United Kingdom, the UK. So, the UK does not recognize Bitcoin as a legal tender, like most countries don't. But exchanges are legal if registered with the Financial Conduct Authority, uh, which holds them you know, to stringent standards of traditional finance institu institutions. So, the time has come to hold the crypto asset ecosystem to the same standards as the rest of the financial system, says Mark Carney, you know, also governs the Bank of England. Being part of the financial system brings enormous privileges, but with them great responsibilities. That, that was basically a quote that he said. In April, the UK announced that they are expecting to re reveal cryptocurrency regulations before 2019, so hopefully in the next year. The intent is to attract businesses settled in Europe. Now, there won't be anything clear or set in stone until the end of 2018 or into 2019 on the UK's position on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So that brings us into China. So, although black, uh, blockchain, blockchain te excuse me, technology is openly praised in China, the country has arguably the most restrictive regulations in the world. So, Bitcoin is not recognized as a legal tender in China, and trading is now illegal entirely. The government banned um, ICOs in 2017 while shutting down all crypto exchanges in the country. So, some banking officials have recommended banning trading of all virtual currencies, as well as punishing the people and businesses that provide trading related services. So while there's no concrete action yet, crypto enthusiasts in the country have shifted their focus to mining and other activities. So mining is still legal, that's basically the only thing that's legal there. Um, you know, at least the government uh, you know, steps in uh, on that, or won't step in on, on mining yet. The People's Bank of China is actively working on a state-backed cryptocurrency like Venezuela. Um, and electronic payment system. While it is illegal to trade crypto in China, the ban certainly isn't stopping you know, serious investors. So trading from China you know, is an all-time low, but it's not completely non-existent, so folks are still doing it. Um, not that many, though. Many Chinese traders are simply using VPNs to circumvent uh, website bans. Now, VPNs, to the most part, are illegal entirely in China. 
um, on March 31st, 2018, a regulatory ban on unauthorized VPNs came into effect. Despite this, VPN providers and other users are still claiming that they have access to the services. So other investors are also moving, moving offshore to Hong Kong and Japan uh, to trade and, and whatnot. A final thing to note that while it is illegal to trade crypto in China, it's still legal to hold it. So it's, illegal, it's legal to mine and hold it into China, but not much more than that. Now, Japan. Japan's pretty crypto friendly. So Japan is the world's biggest market for Bitcoin, proclaiming it is uh, it to be a legal tender in April 2017. So they actually said, you know, Bitcoin is a legal tender back in April of last year. Exchanges are uh, legal you know, once, you know, registered with the Japanese Financial Services Agency, and half of Bitcoin's daily volume is traded in Japanese currency. Um, they, they became the first country in the world to create and implement a system to regulate trading after a, ser a series of serious hacks. Um, the Japanese continue to oversee trading where they feel appropriate, you know, punishing or shutting down multiple exchanges after a $530 million theft from CoinCheck and issuing warnings to promote, uh, predominant exchanges like Binance for operating in Japan without a license. So Japan also introduced its own virtual, virtual currency um, under this exchange association, so it's JVCEA. The association is reportedly set to regulate the market in conjunction with the local federal service Federal Services Agency, FSA, which has been restru restructuring lately in order to improve its handling of fintech. Fintech is financial technology um, related areas, including cryptocurrencies. So going down into South Korea, and then I think I have one or two more countries to go over and then some notes at the end here. So South Korea does not consider Bitcoin to be a legal tender, again, like most countries, though exchanges are legal if registered with the Financial Services Commission. So trading with anonymous bank accounts, however, is prohibited. The country is a global hub for trading, but the regulatory climate is more mixed. The Korean government floated a shutdown of crypto exchanges in early 2017 before backing off while you know, reaffirming their commitment to acting against illegal and unfair trading behavior. Most uh, comprehensive regulatory offerings have been discussed, but not necessarily finalized just yet, um, kind of like the U.S. South Korea may be a re a recent, uh, or made a recent announcement that they plan to loosen the restrictions on crypto and create uniform regulations. That's good news. Uh, the recent announcement from South Korea is part of a loosening of restrictions on cryptocurrencies as a digital asset uh, becomes better understood. So South Korea is, is like Japan is kind of, well, Japan is kind of already there in a form of, you know, uh, taking in crypto and adopting it. But South Korea is, is getting close and it sounds like they really want to uh, uh, do what Japan's doing. So Singapore. So Singapore may not view Bitcoin as a legal tender, but trading is legal, mostly regulated by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. So the country is trying to position itself as a crypto friendly while also urging investors to act with extreme caution and understand the significant risk while they take on. Uh, while well, they you know choose to invest in cryptocurrencies. So Singapore's tax authority treats Bitcoins as goods um, and still applies goods and services tax, which is Singapore's version of the value added tax. So uh, Singapore is still kind of trying to figure figuring it out, um, but it looks like they're uh, adopting it more so, which is good. Now Switzerland is the last country I wanted to go over, and Switzerland is kind of like the main crypto hub. They, they really adopted it like Japan, but even more so than Japan. So Switzerland is viewed as very crypto friendly. Bitcoin is considered legal tender and exchanges are legal if registered with the Swiss financial market, uh, you know, a, a supervisory authority. Zug, the town south of Zurich, is what is called the country's crypto valley. So we have like a Silicon Valley here in the U.S. or in California here. Um, they have a crypto valley. Um, is home to the Ethereum Foundation and other crypto businesses. Regula uh, regulators have issued strict guidelines for ICOs but remain open to them. Uh, four of the ten biggest proposed ICOs in the world have been in Switzerland. So data released by uh, PwC showed that Swiss had dropped from second place to sixth in the amount of initial coin offering funds countries raise, prompting the Swiss to make uh, to make a regulatory U-turn on encouraging banks to accept the accounts of cryptocurrency or organizations. So that's great news. Supporters of virtual currency in Switzerland consider the market to be central to the future of global finance. So, so the Swiss has really adopted crypto and they're adopting it as, you know, a, you know, they're considering it, I should say, as a legal tender and they're uh, 
kind of forcing the banks to adopt it too, or at least adopt folks uh, to exchange their uh, their fiat for crypto. So finally here, um, <coughs> excuse me, global bodies. So this is global bodies is kind of like worldwide, um, kind of together like the G20 summit and that sort of thing. So global regulators view Bitcoin as legal tender depending on the country. So there is no gro global regulatory body for cryptocurrency yet there might be. Um, that could be good or bad. Um, but the recent G20 summit saw leaders of central banks from the world's 20 biggest economies discuss the topic with plans for action um, items this summer. So the Financial Stability Board, a watchdog group um, that regulates the G20 economy, or the economies, excuse me, um, said they remained open to digital currencies. So the FSB's initial assessment is that crypto assets do not propose risk to glo global financial stability at this time. That's good news. Pointing out that you know even at their peak value of the end of, of 2017, global market value of cryptocurrencies was less than 1% of global GDP. So G GDP, sorry. Um, so obviously uh, that crypto and Bitcoin has a lot more to go in, in terms of market cap and they think it's kind of low yet but you know that that could change that could really change while some figures have expressed concern for cryptocurrency's ability to aid money laundering and covertly finance terrorist groups so it has uh, not rejected it outright rather they have uh, been calls for more increased pr protections for investors so they're all worried about trying to protect people from you know terrorism and money laundering and that sort of thing while they're kind of loose on this whole regular uh, full regulation just yet but you know give it another couple of months maybe into next year 2019 I think things will uh, change for hopefully the better um, and then just to finish here other developments so there are many other developments around the world but here are a couple that are particularly interesting so obviously like I mentioned before Venezuela issued their own cryptocurrency called the Petro which is PTR which is actually backed by their uh, oil um, and then Israel prohibits banks from restricting crypto activity, meaning that banks in general cannot limit accounts associated with the crypto industry. So uh, Israel basically says, hey, you know, banks don't punish people for buying uh, crypto and, and that sort of thing, which is good news. So, so that's it for the global regulations. Hopefully you guys got something out of that. Um, I'm going to put this on the Life Zoltar website which is uh, www.lifezoltar.com so you could reference it print it out uh, you know that sort of thing and then anybody that hasn't been on that website yet uh, check it out because I give out a free crypto trading spreadsheet so I developed um, the spreadsheet specifically more tied to bot trading but you can use it for manual trading too and you get a free copy of it if you just put in your email um, then I'll, it uh, emails you a free copy of that uh, crypto trading spreadsheet. So if you go on uh, lifesolitar.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, there's a place to put in your email and get it, or just wait like five, ten seconds, the little pop-up comes up and you can put it in. Um, all right, guys, so hopefully you got something out of this. Make sure that you enter in the giveaway, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, like the video, leave a comment with your BT uh, wallet address in the next video which I hope to do then the next week I'll randomly draw the winner um, live and send their hundred dollar USD of Bitcoin to the wallet address so thanks again for the support guys really appreciate it this is a lot of work for me because I work like 10 12 hour days in, in the tech industry and uh, it's a lot of work and, and again this just takes more time you know out of my day which I don't have much um, at all so it's really hard to do so any support you guys can give me subscribe to the channel you know, keep engaged, um, leave me some comments, that sort of thing. Really appreciate it. And then we build our community, join our Facebook group, Life Zoltar Investing, a Facebook group. We share knowledge, go over a ton of stuff. I try to pop in there at least once a day and give an update on the crypto market or other news and that sort of thing. So, all right, guys, really appreciate your support. Thanks again. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.